Everybody reacts to things differently, ladies and gentlemen, and what works for me may or may not work for you. You know, I can eat specific foods that work with my body chemistry, and although they work for me, they may not work for you. I have personally multiple different food sensitivities, and if I eat the wrong food groups, if I mix the wrong foods together, if I eat certain specific foods even by themselves, I get bloated, agitated, uh, my skin gets kind of patchy and rough. I have a lot of food sensitivities. I have food allergens and well as well. It took me a long time to discover which foods I react best to and which ones I don't. So I've had to eliminate multiple different food groups. I've had to go on this kind of emotional roller coaster of falling in love with the food, loving the taste of it, and then finding out that, wow, I just don't feel good when I consume this. It backs me up. I have sluggish digestion. So I've had to let go of a lot of things, and I've had to let go of a lot of things that I love. Certain foods that I used to eat years ago that were making me sick, I no longer eat. Although on a rare occasion... Um, I'll have kind of a junk, not a junk food day, but I'll, on rare occasions, I'll eat whatever the hell I want. And that kind of keeps me feeling more stable, I guess. Uh, if you put too many restrictions on yourself without giving yourself some freedom, it can lead to uh, you hitting a brick wall, metaphorically speaking. So balance is key here, ladies and gentlemen. I've gotten to a point in my life where I enjoy the path that I'm on. I've become okay with the strict restrictions that I've put on myself in regards to the foods that I consume. I've gotten over the frustration. I just want to feel good and I want to do my best. And in order for me to do that, I need to eat the foods that allow me to attain that. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that food is fuel, and food is what we use for energy here in this world. We use food to rebuild our cells, to rebuild our, physio our entire physiological makeup. It is indeed true to a large extent that you are what you eat. And because of that simple, immutable law, it makes sense that if you are trying to live a, uh, you know, a good quality life, full of you know illumination and activation and just intelligence you want to be putting the proper fuels in your system so that you can remain healthy because without health you don't really have a strong foundation in life because health is the foundation in your life that everything else is built upon what good is having all these dreams and whatnot in life if you don't even have energy to get out of bed and tackle them so we need to stop looking at food as some type of recreational thing and regard it or start understanding its true purpose, which is as a fuel. So there's nothing wrong with enjoying the foods that you eat. But right now here in this material world, people have become addicted to processed foods and things that aren't even shouldn't even legally be able to consider be considered foods. Because last time I checked, folks, food is something that provides nourishment. So let's look up the definition of food really quick, just for shits and giggles. Let me... Uh, find food any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth so i find this really interesting folks i'm not sure if you guys can see that on the screen right now let me check looks like you guys can see that any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth so you're trying to tell me that many of these foods out here that uh, are incredibly unhealthy are actually nutritious because again last time i checked and i'm looking at it right now and so are you food is any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth so it, you know, the standard American diet that the majority of the population is currently living off of is not food then. By definition, it's stuff. People are consuming stuff. So to keep this message short, ladies and gentlemen, I like to preach the message of the following. Regardless of what diet, to, what, let's try that one more time. Regardless of what diet you're currently on, Eliminating all of the processed foods and the junk foods and things that aren't natural to the best of your ability is going to serve you very well over the long run. Again, regardless of whether you're on a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, a pescatarian diet, an ovo, uh, lacto-ovo vegetarian diet, a carnivorous diet, ketogenic diet, 80-10-10, fruitarian diet, uh, do your best to only consume the best quality foods within your dietary bracket. 
We were never designed, ladies and gentlemen, to eat all of these prepackaged foods and all this garbage bullshit made by these corporations. And they really have no nutritional value. It's just empty calories at this point. It's waste. It's It exists to stimulate your palate. And that's why most people eat. Most people live to eat. They don't actually eat to live. When you eat to live, ladies and gentlemen, you approach each meal the way you were designed to approach each meal, which is for sustenance, which is for accumulating energy, which is restoring your bodily functions, which is giving you energy. Again, energy is what we use food for. It's fuel. In the same way that when your car is running low, you go to the gas station, you fill it up with gas, and now you have a predetermined allotment of you know time to navigate through the third dimension until your car runs low again and you have to refuel so we've fallen really far from our instincts in regards to what food is you know we've gone through so much evolution and for so long in our in our history we approached food as a survival tool but nowadays you can drive usually as little as two to five minutes in any major city and have access to multiple different garbage foods that have no nutritional value and people wonder why they're sick this system has done a great job crippling the intelligence levels and the health levels of the populace so you eat all this bullshit your entire life you get sick and then you act like a victim it's time to reclaim the torch of the healer and take personal responsibility ladies and gentlemen so what i like to do i do my best to forage a lot of my own food uh, in the warmer months and when there's more fruit growing on the trees in the world around me, I like to get on my bicycle and I like to ride around the neighborhood and knock on people's doors and ask if I can have some of their fruit. You would be surprised how very few people that actually grow fruit in their front yards even consume it, especially citrus um, and things like that. Nine out of ten times if a person answers the door and you ask if you can have some of the fruit on their tree, they'll tell you to take as much as you want. So for years I've been going around and harvesting my own food. You know, in nature, food is free, ladies and gentlemen. Food grew, grows on trees in nature. It doesn't ask you for a dime. All nature asks for is your participation. So the very fact by default that we go to the store to buy our food is a giant contradiction in and of itself. It's a violation of nature because nature provides all the abundance that you could ever need massively and it asks for nothing. It gives and it gives and it gives. So, but again, you guys, I love to get on my bike and I love to get some sunshine, listen to a lecture on my, on my, on my bike, on my iPod or whatever while I'm riding around getting my heart rate up, killing multiple, dirt bur killing multiple birds with one stone. Uh, you know, going out, it's much healthier to go find your own food than it is to go buy your own food. You have to get into a car and, you know, navigate through the third dimension, then go spend your hard-earned money on a bunch of hybridized food or fruits and vegetables, if you're even buying that type of food, because most people aren't. Usually people buy a few different vegetables, a few different fruits, and then they go to the frozen section or they buy a bunch of prepackaged garbage that has no nutritional value. So to wrap things up, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what diet you're currently on do your best if you can to eliminate the processed foods and to eat only the most natural foods available this is going to have a huge effect on your mood most of the foods that you buy from the store that are prepackaged and processed are going to create excessive amounts of inflammation in your system which which leads to feelings of despair depression anxiety mood disorders you know a lot of the foods are going to cause blood sugar issues and imbalances on the cellular level these foods were designed to be trojan horse weapon systems to make you sick and to keep you going back to the doctor these are just my personal opinions i have to say that otherwise i can get in trouble what you're seeing on the screen right now is one of my favorite fruits this is the cherimoya I'm not sure how many of you guys have actually ever had one of these. They are absolutely incredible. Hands down, probably the, the most delicious fruit I've ever tasted other than mangoes, but I find that these are even better than mangoes. They have this uh, white flesh on the inside. Why won't this load? In these black seeds. I'm going to grow a ton of these in my, uh, at my California house when we move back to California. But uh, again, I have no problem eating fruit, ladies and gentlemen, as long as I harvest it myself. I don't particularly like buying fruit from the store. Um, I like growing, to the best of my ability, my own food. 
I, I buy, I'll consume vegetables from the store, but very rarely do I actually buy fruit from the store other than some watermelons here and there and some plums, maybe some uh, nectarines and things like that. But when it gets hotter out and when the season's right, I certainly eat more sugar-rich, carbohydrate-laden, water-filled, mineral-laden fruit, uh, fruits. I like fruit personally because it reacts really well with my body type as long as I go out and pick it. Uh, you know, fruit is very soft. Usually it digests very, uh, very easily. And because my body needs soft foods most of the times and because my body enjoys foods by themselves fruit is a very good match again but i've done the experiments i've bought fruit from the store and i think that the sugar content and because it's been picked in an unnatural manner and sometimes even ripened unnaturally when you eat it it just doesn't transfer that heightening kind of uh ecstasy vibe or not ecstasy I'm not talking about the drug. I'm talking about ecstasy, feeling good. Fruit makes you feel good. It uplifts your consciousness if it's good quality fruit. But I just don't find that from the store. So I'm going to stop ranting. I'm not even making sense at this point, ladies and gentlemen. Just a brief little message reminding you to do your best to take care of your health. And always remember that input equals output. What you do today will directly affect what happens tomorrow with your health. And we have the potential to take health into our own hands. Remember, the U.S. Surgeon General will tell you that 70% of the the diseases, ailments, and pathologies that we experience here in this hell world, this matrix, the land of the bottom feeder, is directly related to the food we eat, the air we breathe, and the water that we drink. That means that 70%, just about 70%, ladies and gentlemen, of your health is in your hands. Now, obviously, it's going to fluctuate depending on the pollution in your environment and you know how, what kind of quality foods you can uh, afford, but just about 70% of your health is in your hands. Take advantage of the fact that you are the molder of your health and that you can directly manipulate your immunity levels, your weight levels, your clarity of mind. Again, most of these foods that are processed and a lot of these grains and whatnot cause massive amounts of inflammation in your system. It takes away the health and equilibrium of your gut flora, your gut microbiome. Now, when you pollute your gut, when you damage your digestive system with these inflammatory foods and whatnot, you directly affect your mind, which is intimately connected to your gut. Your gut and your brain are intimately connected through various different mechanisms, physiologically speaking. And when you damage one part of your organism, you directly affect the other part. So again, these are cherimoyas, you guys. Uh, some of my favorite fruit. They're incredibly expensive. I've never seen them look like that, actually. That's weird looking. They typically speaking look like this. Uh, one of my other favorite fruits is the mango. Mangoes are delicious. Uh, mango steens as well. These are really pretty trippy looking. Mango steens. Uh, sorry guys, I'm not even sure if you can see that on the screen. Let's see. Uh, mango steens. Pretty cool fruit. You can usually find these frozen at Asian markets. One of my, and you know what? Lychees are probably my other lychee. Fr fruit is really awesome if you're in the right environment and you can harvest it yourself. Store-bought fruit is just a joke in my opinion because it's old by the time you get it. And so is the produce, so, or so is the, the vegetables. So, you know, a large portion of my message is to try to inspire you to take care of your own health and start your own garden. I, uh, if you go over to... my Amazon store right now, you guys, which I'm going to show you. This is my Amazon store. I have down here just, uh, their links are in the description box, but if you click this stuff, it opens up a tab that uh, displays multiple different items that I sell. If you buy items from my Amazon store, I get a little percentage of the revenue and it helps support my, uh, operation. But uh, I mentioned growing your own foods. One of the easiest ways to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is to start sprouting. And you'll notice here on my Amazon storefront that all the way at the bottom, I have a sprouting tab. And if you click that, I have a plethora, a multitude of different uh, sprouting options. And you can start growing your own sprouts from the confines of your own home, from the luxury of your own home, from the comfort of your own home, and your own windowsill in mason jars. You can also outfit your home with simple things like this and start growing your own herbs. You don't have to have a ton of money. You can still live in an apartment and grow your own food. 
The key is just to start small and from there, you will start to expand your operation. Right now, I've got a ton of tomatoes out front growing. Uh, we've got uh, mint growing and various different herbs, but you know, these peas right here, I think these are the right ones. Yeah, these mung bean sp sprouts, no, these are, excuse me, uh, those are good, but I really love the, uh, let me see if I can find it really quick, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I had a lot more stuff in here. In fact, I know I did at one point. Maybe I, is there two pages? Anyways, you guys, there were some pea sprouts in here that I wanted to show you, but it looks like I may have to re-add them to the Amazon store, but like, I think this is, excuse me, radish sprouts. Radish sprouts are delicious. It's amazing what a one pound bag will, you know, yield. And if you germinated all those sprouts, those seeds, you would have a ton of radish sprouts and sprouts are filled full of enzymes. They're filled full of nutrition. But I'm going to wrap this one up. You guys, just a brief little message. I love you all. And until next time, peace be with you.